give you glory and honor. Thank you for the Paul Bakley School of Prophecy. Thank you for Paul and Heidi for giving them the vision for a school and for how you're using them all over the world. We thank you for their love and their concern and care about the souls of people and, and their obedience to you. And Lord, we ask that you bless Paul and Heidi, bless their associates, all who are connected with this ministry, with this school. And we thank you for our students, Lord. We praise you. We thank you that they have taken time out from their busy schedules to seek to grow in you and to enroll in this course. We pray, Lord, that you'll bless them mightily. We thank you for those who've taken time out from their jobs, who, who, who are uh, uh, squeezing in study time. And we pray that you'll reward them, not only with uh, good grades, but award, reward them with growth in their lives and draw them nearer to you. And we thank you that you're raising up a school of prophets, Lord. And we bless you. And we pray that you'll help us to win souls to the kingdom of God, not only in this nation, but in every nation. And we give you the praise, the glory and honor in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Uh, amen. Hallelujah. So what we're going to do is we will be online every Wednesday night for the next 12 weeks, the next 11 weeks, and we will take one hour to go over our assignment. I'm going to walk you through the assignment, then we're going to walk you through the lesson and, um, um, and entertain any questions you may have, any comments. So what we like to ask you to do, everyone, um, is to mute your phone. That's press star six, star six. Mute your phone, and then this way we do not have any uh, background interference, any noises that will interfere and disrupt the taping. We record, uh, and at a certain point I will let you know when we are not recording. I also keep maintain with this program a chat record, so everything that's uh, in the chat window, we we encourage you to chat with one another and put your questions in the chat window. My precious wife, Jackie, uh, monitors the chat window. She's not with us tonight. She's teaching vacation Bible school at the church, and so she'll be with us next week. But she monitors the chat window, and then we look at, we go over, review the chat record, and see if there are any questions we did not answer during the course of the presentation. And if there's anything um, that we have to contact you about, communicate with you about, we will do this. So that's the scenario, uh, a one hour class, question and answer, reviewing the assignment for each week, and then reviewing some of the lesson material for this week. And so we want you to feel free. Uh, we are family. Uh, the Paul Begley School of Prophecy is family. And so we encourage you to, to come on board and, and show love to one another. And um, what we've seen in our previous courses is a growth in the relationships among the members of this school family and how people are encouraging one another. Many of you will develop lifelong friendships through this school. And so we praise God. We bless you. Now, without any further ado, I'd like to invite Pastor Paul and Sister Heidi to come and talk uh, to you. Take as much time as you want. Pastor Paul, uh, whatever you leave me, we'll be able to cover the lesson for tonight and um, any other comments. So we're going to ask Pastor Paul Begley, uh, our renowned leader and the CEO and the founder of this great school. We're going to ask him to come on and speak to us at this time. Well, thank you, Brother Carter. Thank you so much. Oops, let me uh, turn this down. Can you hear me? Yes, very good. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, uh, hey, praise the Lord. I'm so glad to be every one of you. It's an honor and a privilege to be a part of the school. And, you know, here we are this summer, and there's just, just excitement. This first year. And so many of you have become a big You've got part a of it. echo. There's an echo, Pastor Paul. You might want to turn your volume down a little bit. Okay. I think it's me. I, I think it's Heidi's. 
Okay. Uh, no uh, echo now. Yeah, she's on. Okay. Tell me if it's better now. It's better now. Yes. Mm -hmm. Is that better? Yes. Sorry about that, Sister uh, Heidi, but it's better. Okay. But anyway, I want to say I'm so proud of each and every one of you for being a part of the Public School of Prophecy. And you will learn so much and you will be inspired. And many of you that are on your second or maybe third class, uh, you already know this. And so <clears throat> you're excited already or you wouldn't be continuing with us. But I want to uh, encourage you. Don't feel overwhelmed at times. Don't get down. Remember, Dr. Carter. Uh, is here to help you and to guide you along and uh, and uh, God, the Holy Spirit is going to teach you and, and bless you. And as you dig into the word, because you'll have to do that, uh, you'll find yourself learning things you had no idea. And that's going to just open your eyes. You'll be like a six week old kitten. You'll be so uh, feeling so good about what God is doing in your life. And so we're very proud of our teachers. Uh, I know tomorrow night is uh, Brother Mark Wolverton, who traveled with me to India. He'll be uh, doing his class tomorrow night. I think Dr. Carter's doing three classes, so he's going to stay very busy. And uh, we just want to encourage you. I'll try to drop in as many times as I can throughout the course, but I want you to know I'm proud of each and every one of you. And may God bless you richly and greatly. And we thank you for being a part of this. So are you serious? Let's get let's get going here. Let's get this thing going. Praise God. Thank you, Pastor Paul. Thank you, Pastor Paul. Sister Heidi, would you like to address the congregation? Yes, here's Sister Heidi. Hello, hello, hello. Hello. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm having my own technical difficulties, so I get it if anybody else is <laughs> having them. Uh, but welcome to you all. It's good to have you all here. And uh, you guys are, going, are ready to embark upon a journey, learn more of God. It says if we draw nigh to God, he'll draw nigh to us. And you can't help but draw nigh to God when you're in the word of God. So just glad to have you all. Thank you, Sister Heidi, and we praise God for you and Pastor Paul and your trip to India, your trip to Israel, <clears throat> and we pray that God will renew your strength, and um, we thank God for your leadership, and we just bless God. We just bless God, so continue to rest in, in, in the power of the Lord, and um, you've got many people praying for you. We also ask our, our school members continue praying for the, the people behind the scenes. Uh, Mark Childers and uh, Brock Begley and uh, Miss ZD and, and, and so many others, uh, Katz and Tanya and all the people who s provide the logistical support. Uh, this is a great ministry the Lord has put together uh, to the glory and honor of God. So we're grateful and thankful that our leaders have taken time out to be with us tonight. Okay, in this course, um, I'm assuming every one of you has received your textbook, and the textbook is uh, Understanding the Bible. Uh, I originally wrote this book for, as you see in the very uh, opening pages, to help our brothers and sisters in Africa and Europe who were looking for schooling, and, and most of them could not afford schooling, uh, could not afford education. So we put together this textbook and um, shipped a lot of them out uh, to the people there. And we have uh, under the name Back to Basics School of, of Ministry, we have schools in many nations, especially in Africa and in Jamaica. But then um, when the opportunity came and we saw a window, uh, Pastor Paul wanted a, a course here in, in the Paul Bagley School of Prophecy. So we uh, uh, rewrote the textbook and, and with, with a special emphasis on preparing it for the Paul Begley School of Prophecy. And this textbook already is highly successful, highly successful. I sent out to each of you in an email yesterday um, the corrections on uh, the pages um, as, as, as we knew 
there were corrections necessary. So if you did not get that email, send me an email later on to get the corrections for the textbook. It's your book. Write in it. Uh, do whatever you have to do. It belongs to you. And so we thank God. Um, and uh, before we go any further, just want to review what your assignment is for this first week. If you if you have your textbooks in front of you, and if not, uh, starting on page 345, on page 345, we have Appendix A, and there are two appendixes in the textbook. Appendix A has 12 lessons with uh, questions that students, each of you, uh, is to answer and to email them to me, or if you if you don't have uh, if you cannot handle a Word document, attaching a Word document to an email, then uh, if you're old school and you want to write out your document, just take a photo of it and send it with uh, uh, on Messenger to me, and I'll get I'll get it that way. Um, we work better with you're sending it as an attachment to an email using a Word document, a document in your Word program, and so. Um, then uh, Jackie assists me with this. We will keep your record, keep a record of all. I will have all of your assignments in a, 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 a folder. You'll have a special folder on my computer where I keep all of your assignments. And uh, we keep a record of your progress and your growth. And we'll be communicating with you uh, based on that. So your first assignment, which we would like to have you to have complete in our hands, in my hands by next Wednesday, lesson one. And that is um, the answering the questions on page 345 of your textbook. And I'll review those questions, give you um, a few um, little tidbits about each of the question. I'm not going to answer all the questions for you. Uh, I, may get, might, may, I might give you a hint every now and then. Uh, but I want to tell you up front, you can do this. This uh, assignment, this course is doable. It's worth four credits, meaning when you finish this course, if you desire to go on, you only need four more courses for your associate degree, and you can march down the aisle this time next year. And you'll be surprised how the time goes by. Um, we've got uh, some people on board uh, who may be able to have their uh, associate degree requirements finished by December. And so we want to encourage you. Uh, there's no thing like, I can't do this. Or even if, you're, uh, if you haven't been a student for a while, uh, we'll help you with your studying. And um, I know Sister Jackie, my wife Jackie, uh, works with, with people on a one-on-one, -on -one, helping them to develop and this is beyond the call of duty, but she works with certain students on a one-on-one, -on -one, helping them to tweak their writing abilities, helping them to tweak how to memorize, how to study, how to read. So I'm, I'm deeply appreciative for my precious wife, who uh, serves as our administrative assistant in the Paul Begley School of Prophecy. For, for next week, uh, your assignments consist of, number one, Explain why it is important to have the right attitude when you're studying the Bible. Now, you're going to get the answer from this because I have, in, in, in the lesson one, I've built in seven keys to understanding the Bible. So, in lesson one, read those seven keys to understanding the Bible. One of those keys is how important it is to have the right attitude when you're studying the Bible. Now, if you have the wrong attitude, and if you approach God with an attitude, you're not going to get much from God. You're going to get a frustration. You might get a rebuke, or you might get silence. Okay, so make sure you have the right attitude, even, even before you study. Uh, if you've had an argument with your spouse, uh, make up quickly, because you really can't study and, and grow in this, in this school in the, or in these courses. If you've got something on your mind, you're angry with someone or you're upset, just work it out. Work it out. Pray and get a right attitude before you approach. And, and um, 
those of you who have just completed the course communion with god know how important it is to have a right attitude if you want to hear from god so um we work on our attitudes in the paul baker school of prophecy hey look even before i teach a course the online course i've got to go in my prayer room my prayer room i can look right out my office door right now and look into the prayer room i go and sit into the prayer in the prayer room and get myself right even before i even approach uh trying to teach you uh question number two list the five divisions of the old testament you know um th this whole course is uh built on um the old testament and the new testament we have the divisions of the old testament and the divisions of the new testament you'll be able to learn them in order and even at the end of this course many of you i believe will be able to fire the m66 now that's a that's a, we don't deal much with assault weapons we don't like assault weapons but the m66 is the most powerful assault weapon on earth the m66 is being able to fire uh, those 66 books of the Bible, Matthew, Mark, uh, starting with Genesis, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, First and Second uh, um, Samuel, First and Second Kings, First and Second Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, Job, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon. Um, then taking a look at Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel, Daniel, Hosea, Joel, Amos. Uh, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, Malachi. I've just fired 39s. I've just fired the M39. It's an assault weapon that includes the 39 books of the Old Testament. I learn them in order. I teach people how to memorize them in order. And then from then on, you add the books of the New Testament. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, Romans, First and Second Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, First and second uh, Thessalonians, first and second Timothy, uh, Titus, Philemon, Hebrews, James, um, uh, first and second Peter, first and second, third John, Jude, and Revelation. When we put this whole thing together, you'll be able to fire the M66. It's like, poo, 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 poo. it's come so easily. You'll build build into yourself a memory bank of the books of the Bible in order. In addition you'll learn the books, the divisions of the Old Testament in order and the divisions of the New Testament in order and how to plug each book of the Bible into its proper division. For example, uh, the Pentateuch or the books of the law or the Torah. Those are the first five books of the Bible. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. We will teach you the proper pronunciation of these books. And, um, and, and, and so you're going to have fun there. It, it's, it requires a little bit of study, a little bit of memory. Uh, but in the end, you're going to find out, my brothers and my sisters, you're going to find out that uh, you, you have, have, have grown so much through this course. And many of you, uh, many of you through taking these courses that, Pastor Paul offers are going to, you're going to have more knowledge of the Bible than many of the pastors in this nation, many of the pastors in other nations, and and many people sitting. It's sad, ladies and gentlemen, but we've got a lot of people sitting up in the pews who don't know their Bible. They've got to look into the table of contents uh, to find out where Habakkuk is. They've got to look in the table of contents to find out where Titus is. But you're going to be able to do. Uh, uh, exceptionally well. I challenge any of my students, and and I challenge any one of you. Ben Becker knows that I'll challenge you, uh, and Christy knows that I'll challenge you, and and I lay it out there, and and I I learned this, and I pra I've been practicing this for about thirty some years. I call it the ten second drill, Pastor Paul. I call it the ten second drill. In other words, if you give me any passage in the bible i will find it i can open my bible and find it within 10 seconds 
and I've, uh, God has blessed me to master that drill, and uh, I teach others how to do that so that we don't waste time when the preacher is preaching and the preacher says, okay, turn to uh, uh, um, Ezekiel chapter 3, verse 8. Then um, in many of the churches, people have to look in the glossary and the table of contents, find out where Ezekiel is, then turn to that page. No, uh, we, we do the flip through in, in 10 seconds, within 10 seconds. And any of you can challenge me anytime you want to, except not tonight, okay? And I will show you how th that God has blessed me to be able to um, turn to any scripture, any passage in the scripture within 10 seconds. Now, I had a student last semester try to trick me up on this. And, and she asked me about some book uh, of the Bible, and uh, it and she gave me a, a, a name of a book and a, a, a scripture reference, and I laughed. I said, don't even try it. I think she said, find Zedekiah 4.13. Zedekiah 4.13. And, and people were waiting, and I said, don't even try it. Don't even go there. There is no book of Zedekiah. So, but we're going to have fun with the course. And we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna love one another, and we're going to challenge one another. And uh, I'm here to help you. Question three for your homework. What are the five divisions of the New Testament? Okay, so in the Old Testament, you have your divisions. The, the books of the law. The, number two, the books of history. Number three, the books of uh, poetry. Number four, the books of uh, the, the major prophets. And number five, the books of the minor prophets. Those are the five uh, divisions in the Old Testament. In the New Testament, we're looking at the Gospels, the four Gospels. That's the first division. Uh, Acts, the book of Acts, the history. And then the, the epistles, Pauline epistles. And then the general epistles. And then the apocalypse, apocalypse or the book of Revelation. So um, once you see the once you see the picture of the Bible and how God laid that thing out, and and we're going to learn how each of the books were how the books were selected, and we're going to learn that there were many many other writings that are are could be spiritual, but they're not included in the canon, the C A N O N, the canon or the books that were selected by the Old Testament. Uh, um, um, bishops and the new testament bishops why these were uh why certain books were selected why do, uh were certain books like first and second maccabees uh, which give a good history of the dark ages the 400 years between malachi and matthew why were not were, were those books not included in the canon we will look at that in this course okay um so Question five, explain the role that obedience plays in understanding the Bible. And that's one of your seven keys uh, that you see in, chapter, in, in lesson one. Number six, what does it mean that the Bible is divinely inspired? Uh, we do a piece in, in lesson one about the divine inspiration of the Bible. This Bible is not just some book that somebody decided to sit down and write. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, um, for those people who challenge you from a Muslim background, they talk about the Quran. This book blows the Quran out of the water. For those who uh, um, of, are of a Hindu, back, Hindu background, they talk about the Sanskrit. Sanskrit, this book blows the Sanskrit out of the water. It blows all of the so-called great writings out of the water. This book. Genesis to Revelation, the Bible. It's the bestseller. It's it's divinely inspired. And 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 um the scriptures teach us that all scripture is given by God and is profitable. It's divinely inspired and it's profitable for doctrine, for correction, for instruction, um and uh, and, and for instruction in righteousness, that the man or the woman of God may be thoroughly totally equipped god has given you equipment to deal with life and life's challenges and any religion coming uh, with, with they have something deeper we're going to have a section in our lessons where you're you're going to get the the equipment 
to deal with the Masonic order and the order of Eastern Star and, and the witches and all those people who think they have deeper knowledge because they have the so-called hidden books of the Bible. We have a special section in one of our chapters dealing with the so-called hidden books of the Bible. And, and, and in this teaching, in this course, you will learn that those people who boast uh, uh, the Grand Poo Poo or the Grand uh, Kahuna or the Grand Lodge leader or the most masterful, worshipful, whoever is in charge of the lodge or the lodgeette, uh, the, the lodgeette or the, the, the order uh, of, 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 of whatever, these, these social groups, they do not have any equipment that's greater than the Bible. So in, in this course, we blow them out of the water so that you'll know that what God has given us between Genesis and Revelation is the divinely God-breathed word of God. How God chose 40 men over a period of 1,600 years and he breathed on them. The Holy Spirit breathed on them, ladies and gentlemen. That is how we got our Bible. God breathed on Moses, and Moses wrote Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, and then how God breathed on Joshua, uh, uh, because Moses did not complete Deuteronomy. Moses died, and Moses did not describe his own death and burial as, as we see it in Deuteronomy, so God had to breathe on someone else to write that story. And then how God breathed on Joshua. And then how God breathed on Ezra, the books that Ezra wrote. And so we will identify to the best of our ability with what we have been given. The authors of the books of the Bible, some are unknown. And so, but this is a great book. You're undertaking uh, in understanding the Bible a great operation that once you complete this course when you complete this course you can teach anybody or any group anywhere i guarantee you if you'll stick with this course and 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 do the homework and do the studying and 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 um, uh, master the particulars you'll be able to teach without being afraid you'll be second to none uh, at the Paul Begley School of Prophecy, we are in the process of raising up prophets. What is a prophet? A prophet is one who hears from God and then teaches someone else. One who hears from God and then speaks what God has, has given. And even, ladies and gentlemen, as you read your Bible, as you read your Bible, as we uh, um, um, receive the as we receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit and the gifts of the Spirit and acknowledge the Holy Spirit, that is why question one says, make sure you have the right attitude when you study. Even as you read your Bible, the Holy Spirit is speaking to you. He's guiding us and he's giving us revelation and he's giving us prophecy. In addition to this logos or the written word of God, God will give you a rhema word. Many of you discover that in, in our course, Communion with God. So what we have here is a very, very exciting course. And after this course, we're looking at Introduction to the Prophetic. Uh, many people are taking that course with me starting tomorrow night. Introduction to Prophecy. And then uh, Pastor Paul's course, uh, Paul Begley Prophecy, will be ready for the fall semester. We're looking at a dynamic, life-changing school, ladies and gentlemen, where anybody who wants to learn can learn so that so that I mean there's a burden on Pastor Paul there's a burden on me there's a burden on Sister Heidi uh, Mark Wolverton and our staff there's a burden that people do not just sit up in church with the uh the blah and, and not knowing anything and so many of our people are sitting up in churches or in their homes and they're not challenged they don't read the scripture they don't know the scripture and that is why satan is wiping so many out but ladies and gentlemen this course is going to help you and help me to stand the scripture says and having done all stand stand put on the full armor of god and um that's what we're doing 
in, in this particular course. Um, question seven, explain why it is important to consider context in understanding the meaning of the Bible. Now, you don't have to write a long essay uh, in, in, in answering these questions. You can answer these questions. You can be specific when it, lists, and when it says list five, just list five. You don't have to do a whole lot of extra writing. I just want to see if you have mastered the question. It's not how much you write, it's what you write. Um, number eight, explain why it is important to consider all of the scriptures of a subject when you are studying. Um, do not take certain scriptures out of context. People try to build an entire curriculum on one scripture or part of a scripture. For example, Jackie and I were laughing because there are people who say, it's all right to drink. It's all right to have some red wine with your dinner or white wine or but the scripture says, you know, uh, the scripture teaches us uh, that we're not to corrupt ourselves. Um, we, we, we have, we've been given the, our body as, as a charge. God has given us to, uh, our body to be good stewards. And so people try to defend using certain drugs or uh, alcohol or, or smoking. And, 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 and the scripture says, know ye not, ye are the temple of the Holy Ghost. We're not to defy our body. But we've got a lot of Christians who try to justify drinking by saying, and they take scripture out of context. Well, Paul said to Timothy, a little wine for thy stomach's sake. And so they stretch that, you know, with their liberal theology. And and uh, they stretch that little wine for their stomach's sake uh, to mean a half a bottle of bourbon uh, or, or, or 40 of beer or a six pack. And ladies and gentlemen, no, 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 no. We just, we stick with what the scripture says and 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 we obey the scriptures and we ask the Holy Ghost to help us to be obedient to the scriptures. And so. Um, eight. And number nine, explain, explain why we ought to follow the, the guidance of the Holy Spirit when we study the Bible. Okay, the Holy Spirit will help us not to take things out of context. The Holy Spirit will guide us as we study the Bible. And you will pick up all the, the answers to all these questions in section one. List five resources other than your Bible that can help you in your Bible study. List five resources. Well, your resource might be your husband. Your husband might be a walking uh, uh, Bible. Uh, I'm thinking about one of our students online, Christy Carpenter. Uh, uh, she's married to this great guy, Aaron Carpenter. And uh, I'm quite sure if Christy doesn't know an answer, she, she might ask Aaron, Aaron, can you help me with this? Or Aaron might ask Christy, Christy, help me with this. Husbands and wives work together. Uh, your spouse might be your greatest resource. Others may use a concordance. Others may use, um, there are certain online programs you can get, BibleGateway.com. Ladies and gentlemen, if you want to know a scripture, where is this scripture found? And if you can't think of it, uh, go and uh, 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 you can Google it. You can Google. Google is a good resource. BibleGateway.com. When the window opens, all you have to do is write in some of the words of the scripture and the version. If you're using KJV, then write some of the words of that verse you're trying to discover, find, and the verse will pop up. So in, um, we give you a list of uh, Bible helps in that first, first lesson, and we just want you to uh, identify five resources that can help you in your Bible study. Some people may have Bible study tapes. Uh, some may have audio tapes. Uh, some may have videos. But there are many resources um, that I'm looking at. Some of the I'm looking at the, at the Paul Begley School of Prophecy Library, which is right here. It covers half of my office. Uh, all of the curriculum materials that we've we've purchased for this school. We've got Vines Complete Expository and Dictionary. We've got Biblical Solutions to Contemporary contemporary Problems, a handbook. We've got the uh, Wilmington, Williamson, uh, Wilmington Bible Handbook. We've got uh, Bible Study Handbooks and 
um, Strong's Exhaustive Concordance of the Bible. So Pastor Paul has a, a library uh, that I'm taking good care of for him right now. And we've got all these Bible helps. And so if you ever have any questions, ladies and gentlemen, contact me uh, and, 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 and contact my wife, Jackie, and we can help you to get on target um, with, with your studies. Question 11, right from memory, 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17. In this course, we want to encourage you to memorize scripture. Now, let's take a time out right now. Time out. Pastor Paul would say, are you serious? Everybody does not have the capability or the ability to memorize scripture. We know some people struggle. So in this case, if you're struggling and you can't memorize scripture, then just write the scripture out. When that, when those questions in each of your lessons ask you to memorize scripture, if you're having trouble memorizing, write those questions, write the scriptures out, and I'll give you credit. Uh, what I do, ladies and gentlemen, I love three by five cards, and I'm holding them up in front of the camera. I love three by five cards. I write my scriptures down and I memorize them. It might take me a week to memorize uh, the scripture, but if it takes me a week to memorize it, by the end of the week, I guarantee you, I will have that scripture down. Second Timothy 3, 16 and 17, uh, all scriptures given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, re for reproof for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be thoroughly equipped. So uh, memorize. If you can't memorize it, write it down anyway and, and read it over and over again. I find that when I put these scriptures on a 3 by 5 card and read them over and over again, um, then I take it par uh, sentence by sentence or clause by clause or from one comma to another and just memorize it you can build it in and um, you'll be surprised you'll be surprised uh, how how scripture will come to you I began many years ago to teach people how to memorize scripture and with the with 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 the the prophetic word the prophetic word that there's gonna come a time in this nation and in the nations and and it's a word that the Lord gave me years ago there will be no Bibles it will be illegal to, to possess a Bible. And we're seeing this all over the world. And so we began teaching people over 30 years ago, get this scripture inside of you. And the Bible says, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. Study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman who needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So as you memorize the scriptures, you're doing yourself a favor because I truly believe that the time is coming when there it will be illegal to possess a Bible. I believe that for many years and um, and I believe the Holy Spirit is urging people to study the Word of God. Then we ask you on uh, question 12, ask God to speak to you about 2 Timothy 3, 16, 17. Whether you have memorized it or not, ask God to speak to you. Those of you who are taking this course who have taken the previous course, Communion with God, understand what journaling is all about. But for those who are new, and we have some new people who haven't taken that course yet, journaling means you take a scripture, or you go into your prayer room, or in, in your regular prayer with God, your time with the Lord, there are certain things you do to quiet yourself down, quiet your mind down, uh, yield your spirit to the Holy Spirit and praise. I begin, uh, when I go into the prayer room, I begin praising God and worshiping him. And then uh, uh, telling him how much I love him and, and, and thanking him. And then I, I, I confess my sins and, and, and acknowledge, Lord, I've done this. Please forgive me. And so, and ask God, creating me a clean heart. And so when you confess your sins, when you get clean, and if you have any anger towards anybody living or dead uh you're gonna block your hearing from god so god i mean you can pray you can pray until you turn green uh but you're not gonna get anything from god you 
And if you're praying with an idol in your heart, if you're praying and, and you're more concerned about the issue, the condition, the challenge is before you, you're going to get an answer through that challenge and not from God. And so we're, we're, we're learning how to pray without having an idol in our heart or having something bigger than God in our mind or, or, or praying uh, uh, with uh, if, if you love your husband more than you love Jesus or you love your wife more than you love Jesus or your kids mean more to you uh, or, or your animals, then, then you're not going to get uh, God's best. You're not going to get from God. You may get an answer from another source. You may get an answer from you. Uh, or you may get an answer from Satan. And so that's why we teach you how to approach God and how to cleanse your heart. And then once you reach that place, you can ask God questions. You can have a conversation with God and God will speak to you and he may give you spontaneous words. You'll see them on the screen of your mind. You'll see them written on the inside of your eyelids. Uh, you'll hear his voice and God may get, even give you a dream or a vision. God answers in many ways, ladies and gentlemen. So as you take this course and as you learn how to journal and uh, we'll work more with with you jackie and i for those who do not have journaling experience we'll work with you so that you get the fullness out of this course okay so when you ask god for example if i'm journaling uh second timothy 3 16 17 after i've worshiped god and i've praised him i've confessed my sins and i've cleared my mind uh i've cast down all vain imaginations uh you know, and, and and I've done this according to the scripture, and I'm ready to to uh, enter into the holy of holies, ladies and gentlemen, uh, the holy of holies. Uh, I'm ready to enter into His presence, where it's just me and God, me and the Holy Spirit, and I quiet myself down, and then I listen, and I'm not in a hurry to leave His presence, and I'm gonna wait. I'm not gonna talk anymore. I'm going to let him speak. That's what we're talking about. And then when he speaks, write down what he says. Jot it down. Don't try to figure it out. Don't contend with it. Write it down. Then review it later. And if there's something that he gives you that you don't understand, then you can go back to God and say, Father, what does this mean? And he'll give you the meaning. So we'll work with you on that. And um, praise God. Dustina says, Amen. The word of God will be within us and to give to others. That's what that's what the whole prophetic ministry thing is all about, um, Dustina, that God wants to use us all in prophetic ministry. Some are called to the office of prophets, some to the to a pop, be apostles, some to be pastors, teachers, but God will speak to the members of the body of Christ and give you a prophetic word. And a, a prophetic word is you hear from God and God says, now give this to them. That's, that's, that's God uses us as his instrument to give to others. But if, if our pipelines are clogged up, Dustina, then uh, what we hear may not be from God. Or if we've got the bad, a bad attitude, or if we're angry at somebody, uh, we're not hearing from God. And so uh, this course and, um, uh, uh, journaling and hearing from God, I mean, it helps you to go before God and, and, and to, to sanctify yourself before him, purify yourself so that what you receive is going to be a blessing for others. And, and it's going to be guaranteed that you're not giving others some kind of theory or something that came from any other source. But God, the world needs to hear from God. And um, a lot of people, uh, my friends, are not attending church and they're not hearing the word of God. Many are not studying the word. We've got a lot of people confess Jesus, but do not study the word. But the scripture says study to show yourself approved unto God. And then um, this course will help you to understand and hear God's voice uh, along with the other courses we have so that what you get is from the Holy Spirit. A lot of the preaching we're getting these days, a lot of it is not from the Lord. Ladies and gentlemen, there are people hearing stuff and they're running with it 
and it's not from the Lord. And so we want to be on our P's and Q's and we want to take uh, take authority uh, and cast down those vain imaginations. I don't want some preacher preaching to me his theory or his di dissertation that got him a doctorate degree. Uh, I want to hear what thus said the Lord. Praise God. So um, that's, I spent most of our time tonight just showing you what we expect when you uh, prepare your homework assignment. The homework assignment for each chapter, each, each, each lesson, lesson one, turn to your um, appendix A, and you'll see uh, the list of questions that we require for you to answer in lesson one. Then, I'm going to give this to you because you'll find out anyway. Appendix B, ladies and gentlemen, Appendix B. There's a second appendix to this textbook. Appendix B. Guess what's in Appendix B? Mm -hmm, you're right. The answers to the questions in Appendix A. So you can check your own questions even before you send them to me. Um, but you work out a system that's going to work well for you where you can get the maximum where you can get the maximum learning. Don't just turn to Appendix B and write the answers and regurgitate to me what's in Appendix B. But no, figure them out, walk through the questions, and I want to see, you know, I want to see your paragraphs as you write to me and, and your answers. Um, because we have a responsibility um, to make sure you're getting the best you can out of this course you're going to love this course it's going to it's going to be wonderful um let me just see we we take a break we we we'll conclude in a few minutes but just let me go over uh some of the things uh as you read in, in lesson one uh the reason why we put this textbook together um um starting on page eight what is the bible the bible is the word of god the Bible is the Word of God. It's the world's bestseller, best-selling book. And this is the book that has the answers to the needs. Um, if people put their Bible down and start living on their own uh, intuitions and their own uh, feelings, it it's, 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 can be very destructive. The Bible is God's Word to us. And as you... I learn how to listen for his rhema word, his spoken voice. God's not going to speak anything to you that is not in the scriptures. So uh, starting on page 10 of um, lesson one, you get an overall view of the Bible. You look, we show you the divisions of the Bible and um, what's, what's included in that. There is a correction I need to give to you on page 11 that I did not send out in an email. Uh, maybe I'll add that in an email tomorrow. Um, it's a rewrite of the last sentence in the first paragraph. I'll send, out, send that correction out to you along with the video of tonight's service. Then you have uh, the divisions of the New Testament and then the seven keys to understanding the Bible. I want you to spend time with those seven keys so that you'll have a good um, uh, support system within you as you go to studying the Bible. And that's as far as we will go with lesson one. Um, starting next week, we'll take a look at who wrote the Bible. We're going to take a look at uh, um, the 40 plus people whom God chose over a period of 1,600 years, and he breathed upon them, and they wrote the books that were eventually selected um, by the uh, um, Jewish um, rabbis in in uh, or in the, around 200 BC. The Jewish rabbis got together in a council, and they met, and they chose of the various writings. Um, that that they had received, and many writings were cast out, cast down, and when we 
we take a look at our study of the Apocrypha and the Pseudepigrapha, you'll see you'll see books. And when you read some of these books, like uh, um, Ecclesiasticus or uh, First Esdras, Second Esdras, Bell and the Dragon, uh, uh, Daniel's uh, uh, Ascension, you'll say, "Wow, this is so spiritual. It looks spiritual." But they were not included in the Bible. And so uh, you're on a venture uh, to see a to learn in a great course uh, who wrote the Bible. We're going to look at the writers, identify them, and we're going to look at their situations. Uh, you're going to meet people who wrote the Bible, people you never heard of, like Asaph. Well, you heard of Asaph or Phineas or Ethan or Heman or Agor, Lemuel, Ahijah, Shemaiah, Jehu. Uh, uh, a whole lot of people. Who are they? Well, you'll find out. Well, bless God. Praise God. Okay, um, we try to keep our lessons within um, an hour, and we did uh, much, much of tonight was introduction, and um, but as we go along, we give you time to communicate with one another, ask questions, and we try to answer the questions. We're so happy to have Pastor Paul with us tonight and Sister Heidi. Uh, do any of you have any questions? If so, please un unmute your phone and ask your questions one at a time. Uh, this is Sylvia. I got a question because I always kind of got apprehensive about, you know, uh, to uh, remember all the scriptures and that, certain scriptures and that. I also have index uh, cards to write it on and that. Is it also a good idea to listen to it from YouTube, just that certain scripture and listen over and over to it? Whichever way... Uh... Uh, Sylvia, Sister Sylvia, whichever way is easier for you. Some people learn better by listening. So if you if you have the yes. tapes or uh, audios and you play them over and over, that is a good way of learning and memorizing. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, it may whatever works. Everybody is different. So whatever works yes. for you, uh, you use that system. Okay. okay, thanks. Bless you. Give yes, me, say, hello, you. say hello to Mr. Vernon Curtis for me. I will do that. All right, praise <laughs> so, God. God bless you all. Bless you too. Anybody else have any questions? Dr. Carter, this is Shelly. Is there going to be a, a final? Oh, Shelly, a final exam. Shelly? <laughs> Shelly, girl, that final exam is a kicker. Shelly, don't quit. Don't quit. Don't quit. Shelly, my, uh, 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 I'm only playing. I'm only playing. Shelly, Shelly, I'm only playing. I don't, look, look, I mean, Christy was getting ready to quit and hang up, leave the chorus, and Dustina, and, 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 and Ben, and no, no. Ladies and gentlemen, there is no final exam in this course. There is no midterm exam in this course. Okay. You you do what we call that's good. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, Shelly, you have self you have self tests each and the self test is I just went over one self test at the end of each yes. each each lesson you'll turn to the appendix A and answer those questions mm -hmm. that's called a self test if you don't have all the answers mm -hmm. you can turn to appendix B and get the answers to the self test okay. Mm -hmm. But there's no right, midterm exam you. and there's no final exam. No, we're not going to hurt anybody. We, we're not going to. We, we, <laughs> we're trying to build a school, a school. We're not trying to run people away from God. So we, we're not. No, we don't have final exams. Thank you. Dustina says, LOL, I'm not leaving. Question. I didn't get all that question. So open your mic, open your, uh, your phone. Dustina, ask us your question. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, good. I'm having technical issues with my laptop. <laughs> okay. Okay, uh, my question was, if we finish our lesson early, as far as, say, lesson one, and we 
turn in our work. Is it okay to continue on studying into the next lesson and of course continue taking the classes? Dustina, you're probably too young to remember the, the movie Rawhide. Rolling, rolling, rolling. I know the movie. <laughs> you keep on rolling. Keep on rolling, Dustina, okay? Awesome. If you finish Thank lesson you. one, you go, go roll into lesson two, okay? All right. Thank you so much. Christy Carpenter writes in the chat window, Yahoo, no final. I'm so blessed. Hallelujah. We just blessed. We just blessed. We just blessed all of you. Praise God. Any other questions? Hey, Dr. Carter, I have one question. Yes, sir. Do you guys have any face-to-face -face classes? Any, you mean in class, sitting at a desk, and face-to-face -face classes? Yes, sir. No, we don't. Not yet. We haven't okay. got to that point yet. Um, we're looking at a time where uh, sometime in the future we, we probably have a campus in um, Knox, Indiana at the um, Community Baptist Church. And we're looking at a time where we have a, a campus here in uh, Lithonia, Georgia. And we're looking at uh, as we add to our staff and building, we have a location. I'm looking at a friend of mine and, and my, uh, who has assisted Jackie and me with Back to Basics School. Dr. Gene Bratton in um, Wilmington, Delaware. So there will be face-to-face -face classes eventually. But at this stage, we're online. We're, we're, we're doing it all, your work at home, and having online courses. Perfect. Thank you very much. OK, fine. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Please don't be afraid to ask your questions. We take a couple more minutes. I'd rather you ask questions than to go have you go off uh, in a in a direction where you don't have clarity. Shauna, any questions? Shauna. I'm calling out these names because these are basically young, new people. Yes, I'm here. Um, okay. mm -hmm. I have I don't have any questions right now, but I'm sure once I start studying, I'll have plenty. <laughs> okay, okay, Shauna, your textbook went out in the mail today, and uh, you said you live on top of a mountain in New Mexico. So we hope your textbook will arrive in the two to three day period that we were promised. Okay, thank you very much. We'll, All right, we'll okay. see how the wagon train makes up the hill. <laughs> okay, 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 fine. If um, push comes to shove, if it doesn't arrive by tomorrow, then I could um, email you the questions, but then you won't have a textbook to work with to answer the questions. But I, I believe it'll be there soon, okay? All right, thank you. Okay. All right, Pastor Paul, are you still with us? Um, Share some closing words. Yes, I'm still here. Praise great, God. Great class. Great class tonight, Dr. Carter. Praise God. Um, I love the fact that you uh, are emphasized that you have to keep yourself cleansed. You got to keep yourself whole with God. You can't, you can't be, you know, arguing and fighting with people or, or uh, getting yourself out of whack you know as far as spiritually and angry and then all of a sudden turn to god and ask him for advice you know the bible says his eyes are over the righteous and his ears are attended unto their prayers but his face is turned against them to do evil now that doesn't mean god throws us under the bus and and, and won't won't deal with us but you're teaching tonight of staying focused staying in the word staying in prayer you know, Heidi used to quote a scripture all the time. She said, the Bible says, there is a scripture, it says, uh, commit your works unto the Lord and your thoughts shall be established. And so the more that you're working for God or studying his word or, or showing kindness to other people, uh, there's less room 
you know, the idle hands is the devil's workshop. Well, there's less room for Satan to get a foothold in if you're busy and if you're uh, walking in the joy of the Lord, you know, mm -hmm. put a good gospel song, uh, put a good CD in your car when you're driving or put the word of the Lord in there or turn a Paul Begley video on. What? Yeah, 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 yeah yes. Yes, I mean, God. whatever, but stay, <laughs> stay involved and stay in, in a good spirit. And then you will hear from God. You will hear from God. It'll be amazing. So Dr. Carter, I appreciate your teaching tonight and all the students that are here. I'm so proud of all of you. I'm so glad you guys are part of the school. Praise God. Thank you, Pastor Paul. And we, we're proud of you too. And uh, proud of what, uh, God is using you to do. We give God the praise, the glory, and honor. And uh, with that, everybody, uh, let's have our closing prayer, and uh, then um, we we will we will end this session for tonight. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you and love you and bless you and honor you. Thank you for this wonderful school that you have put together through Pastor Paul Begley, and we ask that you continue bless and guide him and Heidi. Bless our students, meet every need. Let them not be weary in well-doing, but help them to patiently wait on you. Give them a spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of you, that the eyes of their understanding will be enlightened. And we give you the praise. Keep us all humble, Lord. Forgive us of our sins. Cleanse us of all unrighteousness. And help us to reach out to this world with the gospel of Jesus Christ. And we thank you. We pray that God that you'll keep everyone healthy and strong and meet and supply every need in the name of Jesus. We pray. Amen. Good night, everybody. Amen.